Hilary and this is a video to welcome you to the themed um, sketchbook year where we're going to be working with the theme of the healing garden. Sketchbooks are something that underpins my art practice completely and not in the work, not in the sense that I develop work in my sketchbooks and then produce that as finished work. That's not how it works for me. For me, it's more that playing in my sketchbooks, um, finding things out, trying things out, just spending that time creating without an aim feeds into my creative soul and makes me ever more creative. If I don't do that, I find that I lose my creativity, I lose my spark, I start getting jaded with it, it all feels a bit like hard work. So for me, that's about putting, um, allowing your inner child, your inner child artist, some space to play. That's how I interpret it. Um, all of us, when we're children, can create art. Um, and my belief is that we need to encourage that childish aspect, that child of ours, to come out and create art again. The adult in us isn't the best person to create our art. It's undoubtedly the child. They were so good at it until the world taught them that things were different to how they were expressing them. And we need to get back to expressing our world how we see it. And sketchbooks and playing in them is fundamental to that. So I'm really looking forward to this year. It's an absolute treat to take one theme and spend a whole year on it. I've got dozens and dozens of sketchbooks um, on lots and lots of different themes, many ongoing, but it's rare that I actually get to work through continuously for a year with one theme. Um, and I'm really, really looking forward to that. So this is really just to let you know um, what kind of things you might be doing and what kind of things you might want to think about collecting together for the course. It's probably going to be um, a real mix, a real mix of things. I don't want this to go down um, a one direction sketchbook course. So I don't, what I mean by that is I don't want it to be all drawing or all printing or all collage or all painting. I'd like to bring in all that variety of media so that we learn lots of different ways of creating pages. Um, because there isn't just one way and one way won't suit everybody so if what we're doing one month you know for instance i'm doing jelly printing and you don't like that but you loved using stamps the month before ignore the jelly printing have a go obviously but ignore that and carry on using your stamps it's to help us find different ways of getting what we feel what we see and what we want to say into books there'll be quite a large journaling element in this one i suspect um because it's the kind of theme that feeds into that there's um, the whole concept of healing plants, healing herbs um, is a big one and medicine is my background, art is my future um, and I absolutely adore gardening, it's my second passion in life. So there's a huge tie in there and I would definitely like to um, get some um, journaling into my sketchbook about these plants, about their uses, um, both medicinal and in terms of salves, potions, lotions, beauty potions, essential oils, you know, there's millions of ways that plants can be used, maybe not millions, um, certainly dozens of ways that plants can be used to enhance our overhaul well-being. Overhaul, overall well-being. I also think that just the garden and nature themselves are healing. Um, the being outdoors, getting vitamin D um, from sunshine, just seeing the sun, getting your hands in the soil, feeling rain on your back, seeing something grow from a seed. All of those to me are deeply healing experiences. So there might be a bit of that might come into things as well. Um, I also am very drawn to, I'm a very visually orientated artist and I'm very drawn to the kind of things that our healing plants grow in. Um, so there's definitely going to be, so both the pots and planters and beds that the plants grow in, arrangements of plants, a window box of herbs, I find all of those very exciting imagery. And also the kind of um, pots that would be used by, in the apothecary, um, to put lotions, potions, herbs, to store them in, to put the medicines in, medicine bottles, all of that fascinates me as well. So I'm anticipating a very exciting, interesting and diverse year. So the kind of things you're going to need, please don't just go out and buy all this lot. You've probably got loads of them. If you haven't, see what you have got. Watch what I'm going to do with things. See if you have something that could substitute before you go and buy. I have... Um, 
well, obviously, I'm using the art materials I like, so I happen to have them. You know, that's I'm not going to say, ah, yes, well, you know, I suggest we all use, or I don't know, transfer paints, but I haven't got them. You know, I, these are all obviously things I've got. But you may have other things you like. So so substitute when you can. I'll tell you if it's something that I think is key. One thing that I think is key is some permanent pen. I've got a Sharpie here, which is a slightly larger nib, and I've got, this is a Uniball Eye, which is a smaller nib, both are waterproof. I can journal in these, I can paint over the top of them, I can add dye, um, and they um, are, I have those with me wherever I go. The other thing that is absolutely essential is a sketchbook. Um, and for this course, I've got probably dozens again of different types of sketchbook you know I never quite decide what I like best do I like it big do I like it small blah 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 but recently I started working in these um these kind of um soft backed sketchbooks they're cheap cheap and easy very available um, you're not investing a whole lot of money in this. It doesn't have huge volumes of pages. Um, I think some have 20, some have 40. This is a C white one, 40 pages. Um, 140 grams. Um, you need that kind of weight to take wet media without a whole load of buckling. Bizarrely, sharpie pen still seems to go through, but we won't worry about that. We'll look at what we can do about that. I think these are great. I can fill one of these, move on to another, fill one of these, move on to another, paint the cover. Not that I ever really get round to that, but I am going to this year. Um, without spending a lot of money. They're easy to transport. They are easy to open and work on both sides. They haven't got that wiro binding in the way, which I find very irritating when I'm trying to work on this side of the page and I'm forever hitting the wiro binding. So they haven't got that. I can take pages in, I can take pages out of them very easily and I can tip pages into them very easily. My current two favorite sizes are this one, which is the eight inch square, I think, or maybe nine inch square. And this one, which is, um, it's a long, it's 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 the long version of that yeah. um so it's what is it it's a4 landscape that's what it is i knew there was something that is this is an a4 landscape and i really like this because you get an enormously long space to work in and i like working things in lines i do like working that kind of composition when i make work i like long and thin and i can turn this this way or this way i've got no worries about turning my sketchbook round um, which is good because quite often i print the wrong way in it anyway and if i tip pages into this i can make an enormously long sort of concertina zigzag thing going on so that's one current favorite and the other is this square one for similar reasons um this is a bit smaller it's a bit easier for me to get on camera actually so i might work on this one but again i can tip you know i can tip i could tip some of the a4 pages into here and make a very long structure i can also tip pages in upwards if i want to make a tall structure so i think these are really flexible they're not expensive to buy you can treat yourself um, without worrying about it you could also use this size this is a six you could use a five as well um just depends how you like working this these are great for me for little um i use them actually to collect imagery that's what i use them for so i have books that have um plants in or pots in or cat's eye in or um whatever it might be i use these as imagery collector because they're nice and small in terms of drawing and painting these are a bit small for me i tend to like to work quite big but they may suit you fine um so choose a size you like um you could use a three that's fantastic to work in very free i'm not going to use an a3 i love working in a3 but i've discovered it's really hard to get on camera so i shall work in um one of these probably either that probably both probably both to be honest so this is the other kind of sketchbook that i think i don't like it quite as much but i do think these are nice these are um what they're called i don't know what they're called um but anyway, they have this nice card co co um, cover, which is nice if you're out and about. Because no, you can't rest on it, can you? Because you're working in it. Yes, you could if you if you were if yes, you could. Yes, you could. Not when you were working in it. Nice again, steady paper. Again, it will go flat. I've gone right off wire of sketchbooks. Um, I've got some, and I just find them a pain in the ass to be honest, because as I say, I can't get into the middle. 
I can't get into that middle part. Um, so that's that's another nice one. These, these are all sea whites um, and they're all very reasonable prices. So you definitely need a sketchbook and you definitely need a pen. And I would say you need something to add colour. That would be at its most basics. And two nice portable ways to do that are this. So this these are both by um, the company called Kuinor or Koinor. Um, this is um, a palette of 12 dye colours, um, which you can mix together to make other colours. Very easily portable. It's got a little palette in the lid. You can see I forget about the palette and just use the whole thing and make a mess, but that's fine. That's my style. That's me. Um, one of those is great. Or these little stacking ones. These I like even better. <laughs> You can see these are very well used um, and these you can get dye ones or, or I think they're usually called brilliant watercolours or you can get watercolour ones. I like both of them. I seem to have a mix here. I've got a watercolour one on the top. I can just tell by the softer colours and these are the dye palettes a little bit more intense. They have a little well in the middle for, for mixing and they also have a little palette in the top and they all, all join together. So they're really, really good. And to be honest, you could make a sketchbook if you had a bit of gesso to mix in to give you some white basic color. You could make a sketchbook using just those things. But what else is fun to have and useful to have? Well, I know actually a glue stick. You've got to have a glue stick because you've got to be able to stick stuff in, ephemera, collage, things like that. And then that makes me think you need some paper to print on outside of your sketchbook. So, Simplest, easiest, very, very good. Copy of paper, just buy the cheapest you can. Um, and we're going to print on this. We're going to and use it for collage. So we're going to use it with jelly printing, stamping, stenciling, and then use this to put collage in our books. Um, so I've got copy of paper. I've got some deli paper, um, which is uh, a little bit transparent, translucent. So it's going to show through when I put it in my book. Um, great for taking rubbings um, and prints um, and this one will take wet media, um, not just paint, it will take dye as well. So some deli paper is nice. And then just some fan papers. I've got some music paper here, which is nice for printing on um, and adding into my book. And then I've got a collection of books here, old books, which I, I snaffle up. This one is called, I've already been using this in a herb book, um, but this one's called Modern Herbal. Um, and I just found this in a National Trust shop, I think, um, and won't have paid very much for it, but it's great. It's got some lovely images in it, which I've started pulling out. I like to kind of quite like to hang on to these because I think they're beautiful. But lots of pages with just text on, um, which I can use for printing on. I can use to stick into my book to make backgrounds. Um, so something, I mean, that's going to last me a long, long time, this book, isn't it? Um, but that didn't stop me getting another one. Um, this one is oh, this a long time ago, the new illustrated gardening encyclopedia. Um, I mean, that is going to make in itself, I can make a lovely altered book out of the outside of that. Um, sometimes they've got a signature in the front that tells me how old they are. No, that one hasn't, but it's got, <laughs> it's been taped back together when it fell to pieces. And again, this one hasn't got as many, it hasn't got those gorgeous illustrations, though it does have, it does have some. Um, but this has got lots and lots of um, sheets of paper that I can use to print on um, and to make collages in my sketchbook. Um, and I've got another, I mean, any really, and they don't actually have to be on theme. These are all because gardens are one of my passions. These are all gardening ones. And this is another one that will make a lovely um, altered book when I've finished with it. Oh, this one's 1909. That's just amazing. I find that amazing. So that is 114 years old. Who would have thought? And I know PPC, geranium, I'm looking at the plants here. You know, I could find a little bit of information about one of my plants. Let's just see if I can H is in here. I can't resist. This is supposed to be an introduction and I'm off. But E comes before G. That would be one. Oh, oryngium. Ek, ek, ek. Ec Echinacea. It's on two pages. Oh no. No, that's Emesia Echinops. E I can't read it upside down. Ek, ek, ekin, ekin, a, ekin. Oh, it's not in here. 
How can it not ha How can it not be? I wonder if it's got another name. I'll have to look it up. Um, but I could take bits out of this to stick in and then I can use other pages from this to print on. So bits like that are great. Um, if you haven't got any, just some copy of paper will do. You're absolutely fine um, and just see how you get on. Um, I've also got here some cartridge paper. Um, this is actually some pretty heavyweight watercolour paper. I'm going to see if I can find something a bit lighter in my board. Um, and I will show you, we can make our own sketchbook as well. Um, and I will show you doing that. And I can use this for putting tiffins into the um, made ones. So we will have a session on making sketchbooks. Um, so that's my kind of thing. I've got a bit of ephemera here. I don't have loads, but um, I've just pulled out some things. Not all of this is going to be um, relevant these are some gorgeous i think i got these on ebay um postcards um of seed packets um which are really beautiful these so i can definitely imagine it depends whether there's any of these are the flowers i'm using actually to be honest with you even if they're not i'm still going to stick them in see cole's garden annual 1917 um, I'll see if I can find where I got these from because they weren't they weren't expensive at all. They're really beautiful. I just loved the images on them. A seed a seed catalogue. They seem to be seed catalogues, seed packets, books, all sorts of things. So I've got those. I thought they were rather nice. I just yeah, I'll just remember I've got boxes of postcards up there. But anyway, I won't get involved in that. These I can't uh, these again. I think I bought on eBay many light years ago. So this is the time to go and have a good delve around in your drawers because you've probably got loads of stuff. These are vintage French seed labels. Um, well, actually, oh no, these are vintage scent. <laughs> these are vintage French seed packets. And how absolutely cute are those? I mean, they're very old. You can see they're kind of um, they're sort of coming apart a bit. But those could go in my book. Those could go in my book um, and I could actually put seeds in them or I could put little inserts of things in them. You know, we're right into having just a really happy time in a sketchbook here. So I'm loving those. Those are, as I say, those are actually the seed packets. These are the seed labels, which I do think are very similar to some of those postcards. But these are gorgeous, aren't they? So I've got a packet of those as well. If I can find links for either of those, I will do. Um, just in case anybody else feels the need to, to indulge in a bit of ephemera. This is the last sheet of wrapping paper left from, you know, those books you can buy with lots of sheets of wrapping paper in. Um, uh, this one was obviously flowers. I can't remember what, what was in the rest of it. But this sheet left is gorgeous because it's got these beautiful flowers on it. So I can cut some of these out to go into my book, can't I? There's bound to be some of these, you know, Daisy. I, don't, I can't remember what plants we're doing, but I'm not too worried. I'm quite happy to stick into the plants and put in bits about them. I've um, sent you a list, um, and if I haven't, you will be getting a list of the plants um, that I'm suggesting we look at each month, but you don't have to stick to that. Um, a, you may not be in this country, so you may not be having the same seasonal flowers as me, and B, um, even if you are in this country, the difference between me in South Wales and you up in Scotland could be quite dramatic, two or three, you know, a good couple of months. And C, because I may well not stick to it myself. I may well go off on little tangents because I'll think, oh, that's that's lovely. We were going to do da 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 but look at that beautiful um, troilus there. Let's do troilus. Let's just throw a troilus in. So um, don't worry about um, having to stick to particular flowers. I will be going through certain flowers, but we can branch off. And then these were just other papers. I don't know where I've got these from. These look like something that's been in um, a magazine or something to me. They're rather lovely. And just the colours looked nice. Um, and again, I think these have probably come, those haven't come out of a magazine. That is actually an altered photograph. Oh, they're beautiful. What are those doing in there? These are altered photographs of ferns. I'll just take those out. That's completely different. That's from jelly printing. Um, and then these are some, you know, in um, a range in places, they've sometimes got these on sale. And I've just picked up this at some point, probably because I just like the kind of quite neutral colours. And I think these could work well as paved backgrounds and stuck in. And that's a rather gorgeous thing. I don't know where that's come from. It reminds me of the front of um, a Moe box, but it's too thin to be one. But that's rather lovely as well. So a bit of ephemera, not loads, but a bit of ephemera. Books are my ephemera usually, because I've got plenty of that. Okay, so what else? Come off here. 
I'll do this now, then I can move it because everything sticks to this boil. Jelly plates. Now, don't rush off feeling you have to buy one again. See what I'm going to do with it. See if you like the idea. Um, and then, then decide to buy if you don't have one. They are wonderful things. I'm... What's that? Oh, it's a modern tone. I'm very addicted to mine. Um, I've just done a year's course, which is coming up to the end of doing a year's course from printing with jelly plates. And... I could I could do another six months and still be finding new things. They are amazing things. But for us, we are going to use them fairly simply just to print um, to print some imagery and masks, but also to print some of the leaves and flowers. Um, you know, having said that, you're not going to be able to do that. Well, no, you might be able to. I, I would indulge yourself in at least a little one myself, if you can. Um, you can make jelly plates out of jelly if you want to. Um, that's completely up to you. The sizes I would suggest are as the most useful sizes of jelly plates. The one I use the most is this one, which is an 8 by 10 um, but for sketchbooks, these two would both be um, fine. This is a 7 by 5 and this is a little 5 by 3 and that's a nice size for carrying around with you. So that's some jelly plates. And then the other thing that I'd like to do, but it's a little bit screen printing with some of the plants. This is a nice, um, relatively cheap um, silk screen. It's a 43T mesh. We don't need to go into what that means, but it just means it will print for you instead of you putting stuff through and it not coming out the other side, which is what happens if you get a too high a mesh. So you only need a little one. Um, I am going to, I have a way when we come to it, I'm going to try experimenting with an embroidery hoop and a bit of um, a bit of sheer curtain and see how we get on with that. But these are about eight or nine pounds um, and I think a good investment. And this allows us to print some of our plants, um, which can be really quite exciting. So you might want to think about one of those. Again, when we get to that, watch watch the videos, see if you fancy it, and then, then go and invest if you want to. What else have I got on here? Okay, I've got some lino cutters. This is just a, a cheap little set. It doesn't come with three handles. That's just, I've got a lot of lino cutters in the studio for students to use. So I have mine set up with different blades on different handles, but you can buy these um, little sets. Um, you don't need an expensive set for this. And the things I'm we're gonna be carving mostly are things like these erasers. Um, which are brilliant for making little stamps for a sketchbook. Um, we're going to have a video on that in our first month. Um, these ones are five star plastic erasers. They're like the um, Steve Lamar's ones. I'm probably well out of date there, but we used to have them when I worked um, in an office. And then this one, these are called, what are they called? Fat Belly Fish. Um, and these are just a nice, these are a nice size. They seem a bit stickier when in use than this one, but they are a nice size, again, for making little stamps to use in our books. Um, so we will be setting up some of those in our first, in our first sessions, um, just to get some pages, get the white off the pages. Um, so if you want to do that, um, you would need those. And then the other thing that we can use to get the white off the pages and we will look at in the first month is just making some very simple foam stamps. Um, and I use just foam board, you could use polystyrene, anything really. Um, and then I, I've got this funky foam. Um, mine has um, oh, not a very decent backing on there, that's been peeled off, but it has, I must have shown that to somebody and said, look, it's got adhesive backing, it hasn't now. Um, adhesive backing so that I can just cut out simple stamps um and make myself just simple um tools to use to make marks in my sketchbook so we will be looking at that and cutting some of the erasers um in our first sessions um i've also got just while i'm looking at kind of um equipment things this is um tyvek you don't need this amount um it's a sheet, um, you may have come across this if you've done City and Girls, it's often used for melting and distorting. Um, I'm going to use it for masks and for making some simple stencils because it's, it's very strong. This is a 55 gram weight um, and it's not very expensive either. Um, and you can get this from... Um, you can get it from the dreaded Amazon, um, but it is supplied by um, a woman... Um, called Jill so and there is a website 
you can see that on there, www.jill-i-am.co.uk. Um, and she supplies Tyvek in small bundles when I've got here. That is a really useful thing to have. Um, we won't be using it this session, I don't, I don't think, um, but we will be doing it in the future. Okay, what else have I got here? I'm going through my piles. I'm going through my piles, then I'll check my list. That tends to be the way I do the, most things. I do it first, and then I check my list. Right, this grotty looking and well used bottle is barrier cream. This is not essential but I use it every time I work. It keeps my hands clean, it makes them easier to clean. And if I'm using dyes, it stops any dye getting absorbed into my skin. So I would highly recommend getting yourself a barrier cream. Um, I've mentioned gesso. This is just, um, this is a Pebeo one, which is a nice um, medium viscosity and a medium covering power. Um, and, but there's other varieties. I would watch out for the ones from the works. Um, I don't know what the range one is like, but some of the cheap ones, uh, I mean, this isn't very expensive, Pabeo, um, this, this tube, um, but some of the cheap ones just don't cover anything. Um, so we're gonna, we're gonna use gesso. Um, I, would, or I would also be using paint. Um, I've picked up some herby looking colours to me. Um, I mean, I know red, but then there's things like clary sage, which is bright red. And of course, we're doing echinaceas first month. So, you know, you need those um, yellows and then the purples and lavenders and lilacs, those sorts of colours, some greens and blues. Um, I'm using I will be using my own paints, which are fabric paints, but they're perfectly good on paper as well. Um, and they're just a nice opaque paint. I would suggest you get an opaque paint because then when we start adding um, other media over the top of it, the paint's going to hold up. You'll see that as we work along. Come on here. For applying the paint, um, I've got some just some palette trays and I've got some um, sponge rollers. You know, these are just tools of my trade. I've been using these for years and years and years and years and years. I just wouldn't want to be without them. I don't use them as much with my sketchbooks because it means getting them out. But when I'm doing some jelly printing or stenciling, I would get these out to use. So a couple of trays, some rollers. I've also just got a small rubber brayer, a hard brayer. Um, which I don't use very much, but it can be quite nice for doing backgrounds in your um, in your book. So if you've got one, it could be handy. So that's our paints and trays. We've talked about the watercolour ones and the dye ones there. Um, masking tape and washi tape. Um, brilliantly useful for tipping pages into books um, and holding on to them. Um, and also for adding in ephemera, you know, if I wanted to tape in a postcard rather than stick it in so I could see both sides, I can do that um, with these. I've got, I haven't got very many out here, but I've got a few mass, um, washi tapes. I particularly like black and white ones um, because I think they look very graphic um, when they're with other colours um, and other media. Um, and this one, which I've got a few rolls of, um, it's... Uh, it's kind of keys and little things, but I don't know. It, it just kind of looks apothecary-ish to me, does that? It's got that apothecary look. It might be because I've got a very similar one, actually, that's got little apothecary's bottles on, so it could be that. Um, but you don't need to, if you haven't got washi tape, you don't need to rush out and buy some a masking tape. <laughs> Masking tape will do fine. You don't have to cover yours in dye. Um, and we're also going to be using that when we make a sketchbook. And the other thing I've got here is some duct tape, which I use with the Tyvek to make stencils. This kind of goes around the edge of your Tyvek stencil just to give it a bit more strength. Not essential again. You could use masking tape or you could just not bother. So wait and see and see, you know, see what you see what you've got. I sometimes use cloth tape. Um, if you've got that for sticking down carpets, I've used that before instead. So see what you've got around. You've got a lot of colour of that, though, haven't you? Um, I've got a cutting mat. This is just an A4 one. Really nice, useful size. You know, when you're working on a sketchbook, it's quite nice not to have huge tools. So this is nice. I've got a one foot ruler. This is a metal one with a nice corky back so that it doesn't slip. Um, so that's good. That's also good for tearing paper against. I've got um, a knife. 
These are retractable ones with snap-off blades. Um, highly recommend that sort of knife because you can keep changing the blade. They've got a little slot in the end where you change the blade. I'll show you that when we're using them. Um, but it means you can keep changing your blade um, so that you've always got a sharp blade, um, which makes a lot of difference when you're cutting things out. Uh, I've also got um, scissors. I've got a small pair of scissors, which I must be honest, I rarely use. I'm so used to big ones. But if, you, if you're if you wanting to cut out fine things, and unlike using small scissors, a little pair. And then I've got bigger scissors as well. And then I've got just a couple of pairs. These aren't essential, but they're nice to have if you've got some around, some um, pattern edge scissors. I've got a deckle edge here and I think that's called a Victorian edge and I've also got a zigzag and a wavy edge um, so that's my sort of cutting tools I've got I did I mention a glue stick I think I did didn't I a glue stick and then I will also be gluing with no I got it out maybe I didn't get it over here matte medium um just let me get it. You don't really need. Oh, hang on, I have got it out. It's here. It's hiding. Here we go. Matt Media. Don't get it mixed up with gesso. If you're using the Pabeo one, they do look similar. Red pot, purple pot. Um, it's a very good matte medium. This. It's. Um, you don't have to use matte. You can use gloss if you prefer things shiny. I prefer to keep it matte, and then I would add gloss later if I wanted to. This is a nice medium viscosity, um, which makes it very good for gluing. I can add it into my paint if I want to make them more transparent. And I can use it as a sealer if I need to as well. So um, I, I think you need some of that. I also have, which I haven't got here, um, but some acrylic wax, which is, even th which is thin, a very thin medium, totally clear, um, either in matte or satin, um, which I can use to seal pages if I want to. But you could get away with just matte medium for that, for all of that. Then I've got a few, oh, and I've got, <laughs> I'm just, just to show you, just, I, I've got a pot for putting my knife blades in, just a little sharps pot, it's an old dye pot. A few brushes, um, I like to have, you know, something this sort of size for doing backgrounds in pages. This one is my gluing brush, really, it's a kind of, um, I think that's a three quarter inch flat brush. Um, this one is a one inch mop, which I really like for working um, dyes or inks around wet media. And then I've got a few just small, finer brushes for if I'm wanting to paint imagery. Those of you that are coming from the sketchbook course, you've got everything really, because this is all the same stuff we use. Um, I've got, I use these a lot. This is Neo Color One, Neo Color One crayons. They are water resistant um, and this means I can put them down and I can then add wet media over the top and they won't move around. Um, and I've got two boxes. This is actually my box of fairly whole ones, although not, not necessarily, but of newish ones where I put my whole ones. Well, I do and I don't. And then I've got a whole box of another one of these of smashed up bits, which is how I like them really. Um, they're brilliant. I use those an awful lot, an awful lot. Um, those are my most used mixed media, but I do also use, and you might have around, um, some oil pastels. These can be fun to use. This is just a cheap set from Derwent, um, but they give a nice resist with the dye. So those might be a nice thing to have, to play with. And I do like using chalk pastels. Now, you don't have to, you might find this stuff gets up your nose, but sets like this are not expensive at all. And you've got lots of colour in there and we can have quite a lot of fun playing with those. Those can be quite nice to draw with on this side if you find um, the idea of drawing directly a bit scary. And nice for putting down colour. Um, I've got another set of chalk pastels here. These ones are... Um, oh, remember what these are called every time I come to this bit whatever course I teach um are they called cretacolor? color no oh, what are they called anyway these are called hard pastels um and they are just they're still chalky but they're a much harder consistency those can be much better if you don't like all the chalk coming off these if that gets up your nose which it does for some people I've got pens um, my favourite pens, these are luxury things now, 
don't need to have these as I say you do need a black pen I would probably always want a white pen as well my favorite pens are these Thule, Thule pens Thule art T double L I dash art I think I might have put that on your requirements list that that, that information if I haven't I'll put it in the group um, and they're white pens and black pens. I would have one each of those. I bought a set recently on Amazon. I think two blacks, two whites. Um, that was that was nice. They are a German company. They're not easily available, so you may have to use Amazon for these. Um, but they are fabulous. They are acrylic paint. They're very, very opaque. They don't dry up, and they're lovely to work with. I've got a few Posca as well. Um, but I think Thule are every bit as nice as Posca, better in fact. And I like the colour range in Thule better. They do some beautiful colour ranges um, and really subtle um, toned colours, you know, things like this. Um, I don't know what they call that. They probably haven't told me. No, they haven't. Um, it just says choking hazard, but I'm sure that's not the name of it. Um, but they're fabulous. I would recommend those without hesitation. Um, but if you haven't got um, those, you, you, you may have other um, acrylic pens, acrylic paint pens, or you may have felt tips. They could be used as well. Um, and then, so that's an opaque marker. This is a transparent marker. These are my favorite transparent markers. And these are pro markers. Um, made by Winsor & Newton or Letra Set, depending on when you buy them, I think. I think I, I think one of them has bought the other, and I can't remember which way around. Again, I'm very fond... Sorry, I've got a dog here that's moithering. Do you know what? You're not. It's nice and cool in here. I'm not feeling good. Can you sit down? No. Um, so these, if you watch out in places like Hobbycraft, I think they're actually on sale at the moment. Um, you can get some good bargains. They do some nice subtle colours and you can layer these up to get different intensities of transparent colours. So these are transparent. Um, the Thule and the Posca are opaque. I like to work with those two elements in my um, artwork and in my sketchbook. So I said my paints are opaque. The watercolours are transparent, but also transparent is dye. And I have dye, um, I have it in pots for using when I'm dyeing. Um, but in my sketchbook, I have it in spray bottles, which is easy to use. And I also have it in dabbers like this, um, which allows me um, to just turn it and apply directly into my sketchbook without having to get a big, a big jar of dye out on the table because I will almost certainly spill that jar of dye. So I've got those in dabbers and I also have in dabbers some of my paints. Um, so these are my um, fabric paints. Excuse me, watered down a bit so that they will come out. They're probably about, I would say they're about 70% paint 30 percent water um, and this allows me again to apply paint direct into my sketchbook without having to get my paints out which is nice because i would probably only get my paints out really if i'm wanting to do something like jelly plate printing or a lot of stamping and stenciling if i'm just wanting to add a bit of color to a page i find these really really useful so these are called dabbers um, and you can just put paint or dye medium in them and I think there was something I was going to say last but not least. Oh yeah, I've got a little, I just saw it in here, it's in with my dabbers. Just a spray water bottle, always useful for anything that you've put in that you just want to move around a bit. Some spray water and a good bit of kitchen towel or towel um, to stop you getting absolutely filthy. So that's the things that you need. I just want to... Not too bad, not too bad. Um, I think I might stop there, put that up as your introduction, and then I just want to go through some of the books and things I've got, some of the resources I've got, because I've got some very nice books and cards and things about herbs and healing gardens and things. Um, so I think I'll have a little clear up and then I'll come back and I'll go through that with you. Okay, so I'll see you in a minute. Bye now, bye.